All right, you guys, this in the spread production. Again, remembering in the spread, number one platform in the world for sport fishing education. This one, the Wahoo, definitely in the top three or four for me, not only from the film perspective, but for the enjoyment of Wahoo fishing. I did a lot of Wahoo fishing when I was younger, um, Captain Bill McMurray. And I got to tell you, this one is, there's a lot of dynamics to this one. You're going to meet a bunch of different guys. You're going to, you know, that are at the top of the game. And remember, in the spread, the guys that are the best around the world, having no egos, willing to share what they know about Wahoo fishing. In the other films that you see, the tunas and all the other different blue marlins and all that stuff, we meet with guys who are, you know, have the credibility worldwide. And it's cool to be able to deal with that. But again, just remember, in the spread, that's what we do. This film, Wahoo, you're going to meet Rick Redeker, a guy down here in South Florida, had a lot, a lot of success in the Bahama Wahoo Championship recently. You're going to meet Corey Burlew, a guy who I was his second mate for years on a boat concrete machine. And, and basically all the things that I learned, I learned from Corey and Captain Bill. Um, placing in tournaments and winning tournaments. Um, you're going to meet Sean Olds, who also worked on the concrete machine after I did, and then went on to place in a bunch of tournaments. And, and, and remember again, Wahoo being a pelagic species, going, you know, everywhere in the world, most places in the world, you, you have the ability to catch those. A lot of tropical places and stuff where, you know, they're more prevalent, whether it's Texas and the oil rigs or wherever it is. But understand as we navigate through this Wahoo video, there's no one way to do things. There's no one spread in Wahoo fishing that's going to, in general, outdo another. Everybody's got their own style. Everybody's got their own techniques. And, and again, the guys in Bermuda who catch probably more, put more meat on the dock than anybody, they have their own style as well. So we're talking in general about the Bahamas area, Florida area, which also probably pertains a little bit to the Gulf and some of the rigs. So enjoy these guys enjoy this in the spread wahoo film take it for what it's worth look at it watch it over and over and at what we're hearing about some of the films whether you're watching it online on your computer you're buying dvds what we're hearing is that people watch things over and over they're seeing something different this time they watch it the third time oh they picked something else up it was very very evident in the swordfish video because there's a lot of intricacies it's no different in this Towards the end of the film, what you're going to see is we go to, I think we're either in Bimini or Sal or one of these other locations filming where we catch eight or ten fish. But what happens is, is that you're going to hear guys talk about keeping the boat in gear, moving forward when you get hooked up. During that footage, just take all that in. Don't watch it like, oh, let's watch us fish, like a fishing show on Saturday morning. It's not really that. Watch it from for the learning perspective. Don't get into the rest of it. You can, but either way, that's what this is about. In the spread, learning, wahoo fishing, meeting all the best guys. Buckle up and enjoy this one, because this one's great. The only thing I can tell you about fishing the small boat that once in a while gets a little technical, and Harry is letting the lines out. You see how we stagger the actual lures, but every once in a while, you're going to get a tangle. Sometimes, especially when you leave a couple rods out and you're trying to deal with a fish that maybe ate, ate the short, shortest rod in the spread and you've swerved with the boat a little bit. So again, remember, you know, a small boat, you four rods, four lures, it's a lot of tackle in a small area. So you really also got to make sure that your aisle ways are clear and you can work around in a small boat. And one of the things I'll tell you, with the shock hordes, the leaders from the lead to the actual fish, you don't want all that stuff sitting around your feet and stuff. So, whether you're fishing a small boat or big boat, make sure you get that out of the out of the way. Catch a 50 or 60 pound wahoo, or some of these guys are right out here caught a 110 pound wahoo yesterday, and you never know what you're going to deal with. So, if, the, if it's that fish of a lifetime, you want to make sure you got everything prepared. And that's what this is about in the spread. One of the other things that I want to talk to you about doing this, you're going to talk, you hear these guys talking about tides. You see Corey Burlew, he's going to talk about the tide 
an outgoing tide and like, liking a certain tide in Bimini. It's funny because in this particular spot, Quesal, it's also Alex who spends a lot of time over here, says the same thing. It says that outgoing tide, that flush of water pushing off the bank. So he's also saying maybe the change of the next tide. So as that as the tide starts to go out, the beginning of the tide being the best, the first hour, then as the tide starts to slow down, when all the water is finally out, it'll slow down. Now as that water starts to push back in, he likes the first hour of that incoming here as well. So it's interesting, but again, wherever you are, it may, the tide may be different, but in this particular spot, it seems to be the same as a lot of the Bahama Islands here, Bimini, uh, Lucaya, some of those other places, but we're gonna get back on it real quick. In the spread, enjoy. Good boy, Tom, Krista, Hooker Electric. Get it done. Wahoo style, baby. High speed trolling. It's a nice trip right here. Need to grab my gloves. Be right back. To the right, turn to the right. Turn to the right. Pound Wahoo and Hooker Electric. Thank you very much. Sand Sal in the spread. A lot of different, a lot of different options for rods and reels, but our choice, especially for these Wahoos, Hooker Electric, Blackfin rods. Let's get another one. This next guy you're going to meet is a character. Okay, we call him the Secret Squirrel. His name is Corey Burlew. The, okay, this kid is the super mate in, in our South Florida fishing, which is kind of the, one of the meccas of sport fishing. A lot of the mates, somebody claims to be the best mate, guy who stays up the longest, catches the most fish, works the hardest. This is the kind, this guy, Corey, you're going to meet. I'll never forget a story, quick story about Corey. One of the captains hired Corey to go to a tournament, and, and it was an older captain. And basically, the captain came, came to me the day after the first day of fishing and said, How well do you know Corey? I said, I've known Corey my whole life. I fished with him. He said, Yeah, weird, man. I never really met anybody like him. I said, What do you mean? He says, You know, I heard something last night at, at a quarter to four. And I ended up getting up and I heard something and I thought there, were, I thought there was someone on the boat. Long story short, he went down in the engine room and Corey was changing hose clamps at a quarter to four in the morning, going through everything. And the captain went down there and said, Corey, what are you doing? He goes, I was just checking the hose clamps just to make sure we had backups. We can't afford to break down during the tournament tomorrow. This cat, Corey Burlew, is a classic. He is a classic. He's hardcore. When you meet him, you can, you can feel it from him. He has true passion for fishing. He is a great fisherman, not just for Wahoos. I remember one day in the Bahama Billfish Championship, he killed two fish in one day um, on a boat called I.B. Stroken. He um, runs a commercial boat called the Reaper in uh, South Florida here. He does, uh, does a lot of daytime sword fishing. He has kingfish permits and all that kind of stuff. So he's well-rounded when it comes to the world of fishing in general. So you're going to hear him talk about Wahoo. Understanding that, how that that's who I learned from, we're going to go, we're going to, you're going to see him hook a double header 
He's going to run from one rod to the other here in a second. You're going to know that when, you, when you're trolling for Wahoo, a lot of times when you get that first bite on one of the wire lines or the short lines, the first thing you do instead of going to that rod is go to the other one and keep the boat on plane. So he's going to, you'll see a little bit of that. You're also going to talk to him, listen to Corey talk about the tides. We're sitting outside Bimini. It's picturesque. It's a really cool spot. And we just kind of go into the tides and, and the tactics necessary to catch a wahoo. But Corey Burlow, good friend of mine, you're going to enjoy him. Check this out. There is a science to what we're doing. It's all important. If you miss one thing, you may end up struggling. So let's get out there. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Here's a first lure. We'll try out with the black and red because the color of the water is beautiful, purple. to have a nice tight drag, everything set just right. Too loose of a drag won't hook a fish, too tight of a drag usually, once they get way out, ends up ripping the hook out of her mouth. So you try to get it set at, I like the 18 to 20 pound range. Whether it's the wire, which is old school, or the monofilament, which is also old school nowadays. Um, we're gonna set out another side there. You try to have a good count. The whole idea is to get all your lures set up so it looks like a school. You get two underneath, two on top, if you got six rods, you fish another two there around south, so it's like a kind of a diamond shaped pattern. So that's what we'll try out. Today we're going to start with three, just test out a new boat, so we'll see what we can do. Guys probably aren't used to seeing the old school star drags. Nowadays you're looking at the lever drags. But for wire line, these reels are the best because they hold up to the corrosion and they're just well, low gear ratio helps you be able to crank them in a lot better too. So we're trying to get them set up now where you have to school back there in just the right pattern so you get a strike, you're able to get maybe a double or triple out of it. Um, at the moment, like I said, it's a new boat for me, so I'm adjusting to the, you know, you want the clarity of the water. You've got a lot of wake back there and uh, whitewash, so you want to be able to adjust for it where it need be to get the bites. All right, we're starting now. We got here at about, I guess, 11 o'clock. Not sure what time it is right now, but the outgoing tide just started not too long ago. So we're going to try out in front of Bimini and work our way towards the cat. Because uh, this time of year, a lot of times the bait will get pushed up onto uh, the cat area or Bimini right out front. So we'll fish the outgoing tide this afternoon, check this area out. And we have a small front coming tomorrow. So if we don't do well here, generally when you get the wind out of the northwest to north, Isaacs is better because it pushes the bait up onto the edge. And then it also will be a late time or late morning bite as well tomorrow. So hopefully it will work out in our favor in both sections and we'll be a hero today. Uh, when you're waiting for a wahoo bite, obviously you can see how fast we're going. You're going to just sit here and be in a daze, and all of a sudden you're going to hear the reel screaming. Because we're going so fast that when they latch on, it's going to set the hook right away and start screaming. The first thing you want to do is, depending on how good of a boat driver you have, you can either speed up the boat, because generally that'll help you get other strikes as well, or you can have whoever's fishing you run over and start cranking on the opposite rod that's not having a fish on it and just work the rods because sometimes you just keep going for a little longer you'll get that second third even sometimes a fourth fish i mean the most i've ever had on it once myself was six and that's just working everything together that's the whole idea you get everything zipping through the edge there and it produces fish and doubles and triples are not uncommon once the fish is on generally these fish like to run straight out and depending on which way you turn they're going to turn the opposite way to head offshore or inshore depending on which way you're turning when they're doing that, you want to stay on that rod really good, keeping it tight at all times. Because if you don't, sometimes they'll turn around and start racing towards the boat, and they can still shake that hook out, even though at this speed, you would think the hook is set perfectly. And the only time is if it gets hooked in that bone in their roof is when they won't come off. But if they get hooked in the sides, you know as well as I do, they shake their heads enough, make that hole bigger, hook slides right on out. So 
You want to keep it tight at all times? If, it, if you can crank faster, crank faster. If you can't, just take your time. And that's why some of these low gear ratio reels are perfect because you can only go one speed anyways. And it's just generally perfect.